여러분 안녕하십니까? Good morning everyone. 생명의 땅 전라남도 신안에서 인사를 드립니다. Welcome to 신안 섬 신안 island. Thank you for uh, being with us. I am Kim Gyeong-mi, MC for the opening ceremony. The fall has arrived. This island is being called Island of Angel. I'm personally very honored to uh, take this position to lead the uh, opening ceremony. President Kim Dae-jung is uh, known for the efforts and peace and unity, and we are here to revisit his legacy. Not only that, now we have YouTube channel for the Kim Dae-jung Peace Forum, official peace forum, and the Mokpo City YouTube channel through which you can enjoy the forum together. Many people, many experts were gathered uh, to see uh, through the global challenges and find solutions for those challenges. The theme of this forum is global responsibility and global peace. Through this forum, I hope we can recognize the pain suffered by humanity and the planet and learn Kim Dae-jung's cosmopolitan democracy envisioned for peaceful coexistence of human and nature and find a way for recovery and peace of humanity and the earth. Now, we are officially open the opening ceremony of Kim Dae-jung Peace Forum 2023. Sarasumshin생명체가유일하게머물고있는천체불은빛자연과역동하는생명체가공존하며인류의역사를써내려갔습니다그러나어느새인류는공존의가치를상실했으며공존의가치를퇴색시켰고 보다 더 나은 세상에 대한 끝없는 열망과 문명의 진보가 공존의 가치를 퇴색시켰습니다. 기후위기, 빈곤, 질병, 전쟁, 그리고 첨단 과학 문명이 덮친 인류의 위기. 아닙니다. 살아 숨쉬는 모든 생명체의 위기이자 지구의 위기입니다. 지구는 우리를 더 이상 기다려주지 않습니다. 다시 한번 공존의 역사를 새로이 열어야 할 시간. 일찍이부터 지구적 평화와 지구적 책임을 내다본 코스모 민주주의. 2023년 지구의 모든 생명체가 맞이한 거대한 위기를 극복하기 위해 우리는 그 시작점이자 유산인 김대중 대통령의 코스모 민주주의 정신으로 담대하게 위기를 극복하겠습니다. 김대중 정신이 살아 숨쉬는 생명의 땅 찬란한 전라남도에서 열리는 2023 김대중 평화회의에서 하나 기후 질병 위기 해결을 위한 공동 협력이 이루어지며 둘, 첨단 과학 기술에 대한 인류의 희망을 노래할 것이고 셋, 신 냉전실의 속 지정학적 군사 안보 위기를 극복하기 위한 평화적 협력을 도모합니다. 네, 급변하는 국제 정세와 다양하고 복합적인 위기 속에서 한반도 평화를 모색합니다. 지구의 위기 속 인류에게 깊은 울림을 주는 2023 김대중 평화회의를 시작합니다. 지구적 문제 해결은 나의 책임적 실천으로부터 시작됩니다. 네, 여러분 박수 부탁드리겠습니다. Big applause, please. Coexistence of humanity and the nature that is the maxim of Kim Dae-jung's cosmopolitan democ democracy. 
Now we can be reminded of the importance of international responsibility and peaceful cooperation with a sense of responsibility and the peace that everything starts from us. For from this two-day forum, uh, we may be able to find the hint and get uh, get uh, the ideas for our activities. Now I'm going to introduce our VIPs. A lot of VIPs and distinguished are uh, being with us, but due to time restraint, I'm not allowed to call upon one by one, but introduce them by group or organization first. Please uh, look at the screen. Now, first, I would like to introduce co-chair of organizing committee, Governor Kim Young Nok and Kim Song Jae of Kim Dae Jung Peace Center, and we have a lot of committee members and executive board members. They made great efforts to make this forum possible, and then we have. 2014 Nobel Peace Laureate Kailash Sati Arati and President of Minerva University Mike Maggie and other distinguished speakers from home and abroad. Especially, we have heads of foreign missions to Korea. Ambassador, a lot of ambassadors are with us. Ambassador Antoine Azam of Lebanon. Ambassador. Federico Alberto Cumeo Camillo of Dominican Republic and Ambassador Cesar Manule Armeano of Romania, Ambassador Dagmar Tartali of Switzerland, and also we have Acting Ambassador Johaim Arupischer from Denmark. For the future and for the future of humanity and the nature, uh, all of us are gathered to share their wisdom and insight. Uh, please welcome all of us with a big round of applause. Thank you. Once again, I would like to extend my warm welcome and thanks to those participating in this forum. Now, I'm going to invite Executive Director Kim Sung-jae of Organizing Committee for his opening speech. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome him with a warm round of applause. Good morning, everyone. I am the Executive Director and Co-Chair of Organizing Committee. I would like to welcome all of you who traveled far from home and abroad. Kim Dae-jung Peace Center, in collaboration with Jeollanamdo Province, Mokpo City, and Sinangun County, is hosting the Kim Dae-jung Peace Forum 2023. We feel the sense of sense of urgency that we have to find a solution to the global challenges. So under the theme of global responsibility and global peace, we host this forum. And here in Xinan Island, Chaondo Island, uh, the island of Angel, which, uh, which is near the hometown of President Kim. Across the globe, both rich and the poor nations are enduring significant hardships caused by global environmental pollution and climate change, such as wildfires, flooding, droughts, heat waves, heavy snowfall, and extreme cold. Furthermore, economic mechanisms that favor affluent nations and wealthy individuals, such as food and energy monopolies, supply chain disruptions, the monopoly of science and technology, and their dominance over human affairs and the emerging new Cold War involving United States, China, and Russia are exacerbating the sufferings of vulnerable countries and impoverished populations. 
However, it is crucial to recognize the consequence of these challenges not confined to the disadvantaged. Over time, they can rebound, imposing escalating costs on rich nations and well of individuals. Again, against this, this backdrop, the Korean Peninsula stability and peace face unprecedented threat due to its geopolitical location and division. Over the past three years, the global COVID pandemic, which has demanded significant sacrifices from people in every country and region, practically imparts a crucial lesson. Unless we prevent and combat the pandemic, the disease in impoverished countries and among vulnerable groups, wealthy nations and privileged individuals will inev inevitably bear the severe consequences. Hence, unless we do collectively tackle the complex crisis currently afflicting humanity and sense of global responsibility and global peace, both humanity and our planet are at risk of extinction. President Kim Dae-jung advocated for a cosmopolitan democracy in which human and nature coexist peacefully, recognizing that they are interconnected beings within the web of life. This perspective challenges the historical narrative of a human conquest over nature in modern civilizations. As the Kim Dae-jung Peace Forum 2023 commences today, we aim to share President Kim Dae-jung's vision of cosmopolitan democracy and chart a course toward global responsibility and global peace, saving both humanity and our planet. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to all those involved in this forum for their unwavering dedication. And I wish all participants good health and a fulfilling experience as they engage with the natural beauty, culture, arts, and history of Jeollanam-do province. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Kim Sung-jae, the executive director of the Kim Dae-jung Peace Center. He's just mentioned about the global crisis that humanity faces and that we need to have global responsibility and global peace in order to address those crises and challenges. Once again, thank you very much for your remarks. And next, we would like to hear the opening ceremonies. First, we will invite Mr. So dong Uk who is the chair of the Cheonanandar Provincial Council. <laughs> Distinguished guests and citizens, nice to meet you all. I am Seo Dong-wook, the chair of the Cheonanandar Provincial Council. So, Mr. Kim Dae-jung, he is the first one to receive the Nobel Pri Peace Prize, and he's also the 15th president of Korea. And I would like to congratulate you on the opening of the Kim Dae-jung Peace Forum 2023. And I would also like to welcome all of you to Cheollanamdu, along with the two million residents of the province. And I also would like to thank the organizing committee chairman, Mr. Kim Sung-jae, and also Mr. Pek Hak Soon, the executive committee chairman, as well as other committee members for organizing today's event, including the advisors Kwon no Gap, Kim Ong Up, and Im Dong Wan. So I believe that it is actually very difficult to define Mr. Kim Dae-jung in a single world because he is the one who accomplished the first peaceful regime change in the history of the Republic of Korea. He was the first inter he also accomplished the first inter-Korean summit in the history of the division of Korea. He received the first Nobel Prize in the history of the nation and also the institutionalization of the basic livelihood security system and gender equality as well as the foundation of an IT powerhouse were all initiated by President Kim. During the IMF crisis, he created a miracle which led the country to repay all the loans three years ahead of schedule and overcome the foreign exchange crisis. Not only that, he overcame five near-death experiences, a long imprisonment, and lived in exile. So he led national unity by choosing reconciliation and forgiveness over revenge against the enemies who tried to take his life. So he dedicated his entire life for democracy, and I believe that we need to remember those spirits that he dedicated to democracy, human rights, and peace. 
So it's been 14 years since he passed away and during which time the lives of the common people have become more difficult and inter-Korean relations which had improved have frozen again. Not only that, natural disasters caused by rapid climate change and continuous wars and poverty are threatening human race. And at times like these, I wonder what President Kim Dae-jung, who lived a life, as people say, like a honeysuckle, would have done. So it is only through remembering that we can learn from the past, live today, and avoid repeating it in the future. And I hope that all of us can feel the same and pass on the life and spirit of President Kim to future generations and gather strength to wisely overcome the difficulties of today. The Cholanamdo Provincial Council will also do its best to pay attention and provide support so that our future generations can learn and practice the spirit of President Kim. Once again, I would like to congratulate you on the Kim Dae-jung Peace Forum 2023 and wish you all health and happiness. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Saul, for your remarks. You've mentioned that Mr. Kim has dedicated his life for democracy and for peace, and that we should be passing on those spirits to the future generations. And he also asked for all of us to pay attention to the next two days and so that we can overcome the crisis and prepare for the future. And next, we would like to invite Mr. Park Hong Yul from the Bokpo City, which is the co organizer. Let us invite Mayor Mr. Park Hong Yul to listen to his welcoming remarks. As we welcome Mr. Park, let us give him a big round of applause. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Bokpo City, which is a place where Mr. Kim Dae-jung has been born. First, it is very meaningful to host the Kim Dae-jung Academy event or the Peace Forum 2023 here in Shinan where Mr. Kim Dae-jung was born and it is therefore very meaningful. First of all, I would like to thank the Governor Kim Yong-nok, the co-chair of the organizing committee, and Kim Sung-jae, as well as all of you who are involved for providing this invaluable opportunity. Also, I would like to express my deep gratitude and extend a warm welcome to the scholars and speakers from around the world who will be presenting on the theme of global responsibility and global peace, drawing inspiration from the noble life and peaceful spirit of the late President Kim. President Kim, he lived a lifelong, he was a lifelong champion of democracy, human rights, and peace, and he became the first South Korean to be awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for his commitment for global peace. His achievements and dedication continue to inspire people worldwide. Today, as we grapple with a host of complex global challenges and the backdrop of rapidly changing international dynamics, we aim to engage in discussions on responsible practices guided by the spirit of President Kim and work collaboratively toward global peace. As we gather on this significant occasion to commemorate the spirit of Kim Dae-jung, who devoted himself to the advancement of democracy, human rights, and global peace, and to usher in a new era of hope and prosperity, we seek your valuable advice and cooperation. Once again, I would like to convey my deepest gratitude to all the participants of the forum, and I hope that today's event will serve as a meaningful opportunity to unite the hearts of all those who yearn for peace. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Peace and unity uh, by the Kim Dae-jung is enlivened and inspiring us at this moment. Through this forum, I hope that we can revisit his legacy and his spirit. Next, 
I would like to invite, I would like to uh, the, the play that the video messages from overseas first. Uh, the video is from the Anthony Giddens from the UK. Let me say what a pleasure and honor it is to be asked to say a few words of introduction to this event. I first of all encountered Kim De Shung way back in the 1980s when he was a visiting fellow at Clare Hall College in Cambridge University and I was a young lecturer there. At that point he was in exile from his own country. He and I met up many times. I stayed in touch with him over the years, including visiting him in Korea when he became president and attending a banquet for him and Mrs. Kim put on by President Clinton at the White House in Washington. His policies were radical and innovative, including, of course, the Sunshine Policy, which led to his award of the Nobel Peace Prize. He was also one of the first to understand and act upon the implications of the digital revolution as perhaps the core component of the modern age. It is this indeed that makes possible my presence at your conference without leaving London. I agree 100% with the thesis of this forum that the themes of Kim Dae-shung's political philosophy are directly relevant to the huge problems faced by our global civilization today. However, at the same time, we must recognize how profoundly the world has been transformed over the past two or three decades. This is a period simply of change like none other in prior history, concentrated in what is an amazingly short period of time. It is the subject of a book I'm writing called Off the Edge of History, The World in the 21st Century. We're in a new historical space. As collective humanity, we have not been here before, even if history and tradition stubbornly refuse to go away. And make no mistake about this, we are all in it together. The core changes, all of which are global, are first, as already mentioned, digital interconnection and AI, the latter now in a new and unknown domain with the advent of generative AI. Second, radical changes in geopolitics with the rise of China and Asia more generally. Third, deep transformations in everyday life centered around gender, sexuality and ethnicity. Four, looming over it all the threat of humanly induced climate change. Climate change is not a threat to the planet, it is an existential threat to our civilization, the first truly global civilization in history. Kim Dae-shung made crucial contributions here as elsewhere, based partly on his readings while in prison, famously standing Rudyard Kipling's dictum on its head, he said, East is West, and West is East, and never the twain shall part. So far as climate change is concerned, and many other factors, he was absolutely right. Yet just when it needs unity of purpose, the world appears even more divided than ever. We must build on his legacy. My very best wishes for a thoroughly enjoyable and fruitful conference. Thank you very much. Next, uh, the, we've heard from the video message of Mr. Anthony Gibbons. He has been associated with the, uh, President Kim Dae-jung and his good wish for the success of the forum was well delivered. The next, we have a video message from former American ambassador to Korea, Catherine Stevens. Uh, to join you from Washington, D.C. But it would be an even greater pleasure to be with you in person in one of my favorite parts of Korea, Mokpo. You honor me by asking me to share a few thoughts as you begin this important, timely conference. I congratulate and thank the government and people of Cholanamdo, the Kim Dae-jung Peace Center, and all the organizers and participants. I want to share with you some of my memories of President Kim Dae-jung and the impact he had on U.S.-Korean relations and countless Americans, including presidents, diplomats, and me. 
I think this forum today is so fitting to his legacy. I first met Kim Dae-jung in 1985, when he had just returned to Korea from exile in the United States. He was Korea's most famous opposition politician. I was a young diplomat at the American Embassy in Seoul. My job was to try to understand and report to my ambassador and to Washington on Korea's domestic political scene. Those were decisive, eventful years. They felt so at the time, and equally so, looking back over the decades. I am forever grateful to have been a witness to, and in a small way, a participant in, those difficult, unforgettable, and inspiring years of turmoil and struggle in Korea. When Kim Dae-jung came back to Korea from the U.S. in 1985, he had already survived multiple attempts on his life, including a death sentence imposed by the Korean state. He was already over 60 years old, past his wanga. Partly due to American pressure, Kim Dae-jung was back in Korea in 1985 as Korea approached the 1988 Olympics, Seoul Olympics, and Chun Doo-won's promise to step down after seven years. But Kim Dae-jung was still banned from politics and under virtual house arrest. Many Koreans had been told and were convinced that he was anti-American, pro-North Korean, a representative of regional grievances and tensions, dangerous. That wasn't the man I got to know. He was a Korean patriot and a student of history. He did not seem to harbor any feelings of anger or desire for revenge. But one thing he clearly cared about was democracy and human rights for Korea and Koreans. He inspired Koreans and foreign, foreigners alike with his passion and optimism that democracy would prevail in Korea. We just all had to do more to hasten that day of democratization. I was still in Korea in 1987 for the presidential election that followed Korea's democratic constitutional revision. I saw then Kim Dae-jung and the other candidates campaign for president, drawing huge crowds, hundreds of thousands of people to campaign rallies. This in a country where only a few months earlier, little gatherings of any size had often been met with pepper gas and arrests. In a three-way race, the opposition vote was split. Kim Dae-jung and Kim Young-sam lost. The ruling party candidate, Roteu, won. Kim Dae-jung accepted the outcome, his loss with grace and reflection. He knew Korea was still on the path of consolidating and strengthening its democratic institutions. And 10 years later, in 1997, Kim Dae-jung finally did win the presidency. By then, 1997, 1998, I was far from Korea. I was living in Belfast, Northern Ireland, and I was immersed in another political and diplomatic challenge, that of the long and bumpy negotiation to try to end violence and terrorism in Northern Ireland and forge a political settlement that could foster reconciliation and peace. But during that time, I followed Kim Dae-jung's election closely, watching from afar, inauguration day in February 1998 in Seoul, as representatives of Korea's former authoritarian and military regimes, including figures who had tried to put Kim Dae-jung to death, gathered for his swearing in. I was inspired by Kim Dae-jung's words of reconciliation and the actions he subsequently took throughout his presidency and his life towards repairing the cleavages in Korea's social, regional, and political fabric. I tried to share that experience and that example in Northern Ireland and elsewhere where I served. In Northern Ireland, a few months later in 1998, in April, when, against all odds, agreement was reached there for what was called the Good Friday Agreement, laying the groundwork for, for peace in Northern Ireland. I thought again of the Korean example. This year, 2023, we've marked 25 years since the Good Friday Agreement. There has been much discussion of the work to be done, both in reconciliation and in strengthening democratic institutions. And of course, this year, we also mark 25 years 
since Kim Dae-jung was sworn in as the Korean president. And it is also a time to mark all that has been accomplished and to look at all that remains to be done on the Korean Peninsula and elsewhere. I recently reread the Washington Post reporting on an inauguration day in Korea back in February 1998. As the Washington Post reporter described the scene at the time, quote, at an outdoor inaugural jubilee attended by more than 40,000 people, President Kim, a man who had been persecuted, jailed, exiled, and hounded for decades as an enemy of the state, called for reconciliation with South Korea's authoritarian past and a tough national effort to overcome the disastrous economic straits into which the nation had lately fallen. After all the struggle, after all that Kim Dae-jung had fought for throughout the decades, as he moved into the presidency, there was an unprecedented economic crisis, the most serious for South Korea in its modern history. This we call the Asian financial crisis or the IMF crisis, words that still bring expressions of pain in South Korea today. The president said in his inaugural speech that day, quote, we are standing at a crossroads at which we can march forward or retreat. And as president, even with this unexpected crisis, he showed leadership in how to march forward in ways that many did not expect, reaching across the divide to former political enemies, seeking to lead all Koreans from all backgrounds and working closely with the United States and the international community to overcome the economic crisis and strengthen South Korea at home and globally. President Kim Dae-jung, of course, is also remembered today in the U.S. not only for his leadership on the Korean Peninsula with respect to North Korea, but also his courage in working for reconciliation and better relations with Korea and Japan, which laid the groundwork for the progress that we see today. I was privileged to become reacquainted with President Kim Dae-jung in the last years of his life. In 2008, I returned to Korea as American ambassador. And by then, of course, Korea's democratic progress had been consolidated, most especially, of course, by that 1998 peaceful transfer of power to the opposition party led by Kim Dae-jung. So in 2008, it was a former Korean president, a Nobel Peace Prize winner, getting on in years, who so graciously received me this time, with his wisdom and resilience only deepened with the passage of time. To the very end of his life, President Kim Dae-jung was passionate about democracy, about Korea, and about the relationship between Korea and the United States. I am sure President Kim would be pleased with this gathering today, not because it honors him, although it rightly does, but because it is grappling with the most difficult issues that face us today. You are here to grapple with those issues climate change, pandemics, political extremism and polarization, ethnic, racial, gender divides, inequality, war, democratic decay, institutional hollowing, and much more. Has it ever been this bad? Today's threats seem more numerous and more existential than ever before. But I think it makes it all the more essential that we approach these challenges with the resilience, the persistence, the confidence that President Kim Dae-jung embodied in his long, eventful life. I send my sincere best wishes to the Kim Dae-jung Peace Forum of 2023. Thank you very much. Ms. Catherine, for your remarks, we were able to listen to that lifelong dedication of Mr. Kim, and we also, by by hearing those remarks, we miss him even more. And next, we would like to invite Mr. Tani Tamaki. We will hear his video. He is the governor of the Okinawa Prefecture. Hi, Saigusuyo, Chugunabira, Nihon Koku, Okinawa Kenchiji no Tamaki Deni desu. Kim Dae-jung. Hewa Forum 
、東西約1000キロ、南北約400キロの海域に点在する多数の島々から構成される自然が豊かな地域です。かつて琉球王朝時代には万国侵領を掲げ、日本、中国、韓国や東南アジア諸国と交易を行い、様々な文化、文物が交差する東アジアの一つの国でした。現在は国内有数の観光地として知られています。私は知事に就任以降、国連が地球規模の課題への対応として提唱している SDGs の取り組みを積極的に推進してきました。本フォーラムの2023年のテーマ、地球的責任と地球的平和と沖縄県の取り組みは深く関連しており、また私の誰一人取り残さないという強い思いとも共鳴するものです。特にテーマの一つである地球的平和について、沖縄では去る太平洋戦争において住民を巻き込んだ過酷な地上戦、いわゆる沖縄戦が繰り広げられ、多くの尊い命とかけがえのない文化遺産が失われましたこの悲惨な経験から絶対に戦争を起こしてはならないという思いはすべての沖縄県民の切実な願いであります近年安全保障環境が急激に変化しているとされておりますが戦争が発生し当事国地域の市民が犠牲となり社会基盤などが破壊され経済などに甚大な影響を及ぼすような事態は決してあってはなりません。私は世界の国、地域が平和的な外交と対話によって緊張緩和と信頼情勢を図ることがこれまで以上に必要であると考えています。このような状況の中、今回、本フォーラムが開催されることは非常に意義深いことであります。沖縄県では国籍や軍人、民間人の区別なく、沖縄戦などで亡くなられたすべての人々の名前を刻む記念碑、平和の礎や沖縄平和賞などの取り組みに加え、沖縄の歴史、文化、経済など、いわゆるソフトパワーを生かした地域外交の取り組みなどを通して、平和を希求する沖縄の心を国の内外に発信しています。そして、今を生きる世代である地球的責任として、私たち一人一人が平和について考え、世界へ平和のバトンをつなげ、核兵器の廃絶、戦争の放棄、高級平和の確立に向け、絶え間ない努力を続けていくことが重要であり、思いを同じくする世界中の皆様と連携して取り組んでまいります。結びに、本フォーラムのご成功とご列席の皆様のますますのご活躍をお祈りしております。一平二平デイビル、誠にありがとうございます。Thank you. Another big round of applause, please.、Uh, this was, uh, these were the video messages delivered from overseas that all wish the success of this forum. Thank you. Next is the time for the opening address. For that, I would like to invite Governor Kim Yong l o k the co chair of the organizing committee of this forum. Uh, from Jeolla Namdo province, please welcome him with a big round of applause. Honored citizens of the world, my fellow citizens of Korea, beloved citizens of Jeolla Namdo province. Very glad to see you all. I'm Kim Young Nook, Governor of j e o l l a n a m d o Province of Republic of Korea. I, it is with the great significance that Kim Dae-jung Peace Forum 2023 is being held to carry forward the spirit and the legacy of the 15th President of Republic of Korea, world leader Kim Dae-jung. To all those who participated in Kim Dae-jung Peace Forum online, on-site and on offline, I extend my gratitude and welcome on behalf of 2 million Jeolla Namdo citizens. And I would like to thank Lord Anthony Giddens, author of The Third Way and renowned sociologist, 
for his congratulatory video message. Former U.S. Ambassador to Korea Catherine Stevens, who Koreans were most fond of among other American ambassadors, and Governor Danny Tamaki of Okinawa, Japan, for his commitment toward peace. I would also like to express my deepest respect and gratitude to Nobel Peace Prize laureate Kaila Satyarthi and Minerva University President Mike Maggie, as well as to the world's greatest minds and leaders who will engage in meaningful discourse on resolving the global crisis in this forum. I would also like to thank Mokpo Mayor Park Kung Yeol and Sinan Gun Governor Park Uryang and the Council President so, uh, Mr. So for their strong support for Kim Dae Jung Peace Forum to be held in Sinan and Mokpo, where Kim Dae Jung, President Kim Dae Jung was born, raised, and grown into a great politician. And first and foremost, I would like to express my deepest thanks to organizing. Uh, committee Chair Kim Sung Jae, Executive Board Chair Baek Kak Soon for their efforts, and the uh, Mr. Kim Hong Up and other committee members and the board members. Today we live in the most advanced civilization in history, but at the same time we are facing a complex crisis in unprecedented severity. Natural disasters caused by climate crisis are becoming more frequent around the world, including recent Mediterranean wildfires and Libyan floods. In July, an unusual Polanya phenomenon was observed in which holes appeared in thinning Arctic glaciers prompting warnings of extreme weather this winter. Humanity's irresponsible destruction of environment has become a boomerang returning as a threat to human survival. As great powers such as the United States and China continue to compete for supremacy in the new economic order, military and economic confrontations are also intensifying, which has shaken global peace and security, heightened and heightened the sense of economic crisis. In addition, the Phenomenon of social discrimination, polarization, and human alienation are intensifying too uh, due to advanced science and technology and misuse of resources. There is even growing concern about uh, the advanced science and technology may lead to further domination and inequality. This global crisis are all shared responsibilities that have started from us. They must be shared by the world and solved together. To this end, the theme of this year's forum is set as global responsibility and global peace. The purpose is to take, to take the responsibility for the crisis that humanity has created and present a vision and ideas for the restoration of the earth and peace for humanity. Fortunately, we have a great guide, Kim Dae-jung's pacifism, a spirit of coexistence, solidarity, and cooperation that has moved the history of Korea and the world forward. Kim Dae-jung's pacifism is a philosophy and an idea built on universal values of the Eastern and Western history and development beyond any specific region, country, era, or ideology. His vast reading and fierce thinking from his youth as well as the culture and the spirit of Jeolla province form the basis of his pacifism. Jeolla province has traditionally emphasized the harmony between nature and humans and has developed a culture of harmony and balance in nature, including ink paintings and pansori that applaud the natural beauty, exquisite southern cuisine with natural flavors, and pavilions and gardens where people can see and enjoy the beauty of nature. The spirit of Jalado, which loves nature, is also reflected in the planetary or global democracy advocated by President Kim Dae-jun, which calls for the realization of new democracy and guarantees the right of all living and non-living things to exist alongside humans. General Yi Sun-shin praised the indomitable will of the people of Jalla province by saying, 
Without Hunan, there is no nation to overcome national difficulties. This was passed on to President Kim Dae-jung. This, this is how we overcame the economic crisis, the IMF crisis, which gripped the entire nation in a short period of time, not to mention all sorts of historical and personal hardships. Above all, Kim Dae-jung Pacifism is deeply rooted in the spirit of Jeollado province, which is a spirit of community. The president emphasized the cosmopolitan democracy of world peace, reconciliation, and cooperation, and achieved the first peaceful power change since the establishment of the Republic of Korea, ushering in an era of peace on the Korean Peninsula through the first inter-Korean summit and the June 15th Insta-Korean Joint Declaration. He helped the nation achieve the qualitative growth in all fields, including politics, diplomacy, economics, welfare, science, culture, and etc., contributing to the elevation of Korea to the ranks of the world developed countries. He also has made significant contributions to democratization in Asia, including supporting democracy in Myanmar and defending East Timor. Kim Dae-jung's pacifism, which grew out of the spirit of Jeolla province, has become a solid foundation for peace and prosperity of the Korean Peninsula, as well as the coexistence of human nature, humanity, and the Earth. Nobel Committee awarded South Korea's first Nobel Pri Peace Prize to President Kim in recognition of his commitment and contribution to global and universal values. We, the people of Jeolla, do feel infinite pride in the fact that Kim Dae-jung's pacifism has made Korea known around the world as a nation of democracy, human rights, and peace, and it was born right here. My respected global citizens and fellow citizens, President Kim Dae-jung has been a shining gateway connecting Korea and the world with his deep insight and wisdom that encompass the time and space. He has opened up a new world of high-speed internet by nurturing the future-oriented IT industry even in the midst of the serious economic crisis. So-called globalization era has had arrived where all citizens could communicate with the world in real time. And it was during Kim Dae-jung administration that Korea aerospace, aerospace industries was launched in 1999 laying the foundation for Korea's space exploration. This year's launch of NATO, which was entirely indigenous in technology, can be tracked down to the Kim Dae-jung government, Dae government's efforts. Now in the era of civilian and private space exploration, Korea is rising to become a global space superpower. In addition, with friendly relations with neighboring countries and confidence in power of Korean culture, he pioneered to open the Korean culture market to Japanese pop culture and laid foundation for Korea to become a cultural superpower that world is enthusiastic about. President Kim Dae-jung's door to the future is being expanded with Kim Dae-jung's Peace Forum. It is becoming a shining gateway for the world's intellectuals and the scholars to meet and debate with the goal of paving the way for all life forms and planet and beyond the people and national boundaries. Going forward, this will allow young people in Korea and around the world to learn about the spirit of Kim Dae-jung and true meaning of leadership. I look forward to seeing the second and third Kim Dae-jung to be born, who will widely lead the era of civilizational transformation with the consciousness and capabilities as a global citizen and world leader in a broad world view that goes beyond regions and countries. Respected citizens and my fellow citizens, as a hometown of President Kim Dae-jung, Jeollanam, the province is striving to create a time and place to meet the president, to honor, inherit, and develop his legacy. 
the Kim Dae-jung Peace Forum to globalize the spirit of Kim Dae-jung and the Honam Youth Academy to foster young Kim Dae-jung's are the practical endeavor to this end. Next year, the centennial anniversary of President's birth, a Korean Peninsula Peace Forest will be built in his hometown of Haido Island, Sinangun, which will become a sanctuary for peace in Northeast Asia. And in Samakdo Island, Mokpo, there is a plan to build a Kim Dae-jung World Peace Park by 2025 to honor President Kim's peace spirit. And above all, we are committed to realization of the theme of the Kim Dae-jung Peace Forum, Global Responsibility and Global Peace, built upon Kim Dae-jung's spirit of coexistence, harmony, peace, and coexistence. With uh, abundant renewal res energy resources, we are working on the world's largest offshore wind farm in Xinan, solar farms, hydrogen industry, more to realize carbon neutrality, which is essential to overcoming economic uh, climate crisis. In addition, we will open up an era of true freedom and happiness by developing high-tech industries that can coexist with nature in the era of climate change, moving away from human-centered technology development. To this end, we will do our best to foster various high-tech strategic industries such as aerospace and secondary battery, etc. Based on clean and vibrant natural resources and historic cultural resources, we are creating a new era of cultural and tourism prosperity, creating a new trend. In particular, we will uh, create a global marine tourism belt on the south coast, making it a tourist attraction for the world. And we will host 2026 Yosu World Island Expo based on our beautiful marine resources in pristine seas, island, and UNESCO World Natural Heritage Tidal Flats. And by hosting the third, 33rd Conference on the Parties COP33, uh, to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change to the southern coastal region centered on Yosu. We will join the forces with the world in seeking sustainable global responsibility. It's been four years since President Kim left us. It's been a long time, but we miss him even more. Do not hesitate to move forward. Do not be impatient when you should be patient. And do not be discouraged when you should be regretful, said President Kim. Let's persevere and move forward together for a global responsibility and peace before it's too late. Jeolla Nam province will continue to inherit the spirit of Kim Jeolla Do and Kim Dae Jung's pacifism to create a country where justice flows like a river, freedom blossoms like wildflowers and hope for reunification rises like a rainbow as President Kim had longed for. I believe that small steps we take today will be the big ones that move history forward. May the spirit of peace and happiness fill the hearts of all of you, all of us. Thank you. Thank you very much. The governor, Mr. Kim Young Nook, the governor of Jeollanamdo province, thank you for your opening remarks. And we've just heard that we need to pass on the spirits of Mr. Kim Dae Jung, and we could hear the commitment of Jeollanamdo. And also, achieving peace begins from ourselves. Once again, we agree with what he said. Through solidarity and cooperation, we have to be able to think about the challenges and face the challenges and crisis. Thank you very much for all the remarks.